Welcome to another edition of Stalls TV. I'm Bob Robinson and we're excited that you're here today. Uh, today we're talking about decorating uniforms for fall sports. Now it's very hot and muggy right here and it doesn't feel anything like fall and I'm really rooting for fall to show up but uh, we need to be thinking if you're not already doing some some uniforms for the for the fall sports teams we need to start talking about that and see uh, Make sure we're doing it right and make sure that our, our customers are happy and we are the perceived uh, experts at doing this type of thing. So uh, before we get too far along, we, are going, we have a, a, a couple poll questions or a few poll questions that uh, Karen will be uh, offering those up and because I'm very interested in hearing who you are and what you're doing. So we'll go with that, Karen. Estimate what percentage of your business is there sports jerseys. All right, so 62% said 5% to 25%, 17% said 25 to 50%, 17% said 50 to 75%, and 3% said over 75%. Okay, good info. What's next? How do you primarily decorate sports jerseys? Okay. 0% applique, 10% all pre-cut numbers and letters, vinyl, 60% all CAD cut on my vinyl cutter, 10% pre-cut numbers and CAD cut names, 20% screen printed numbers and names. Okay, what's next? Do you have a vinyl cutter? Okay, 82% yes and 18% no. Okay. And I'll go right into, do you have a printer cutter? There we go. 24% yes and 76% no. Okay, that's a good number actually. Very good. Hey, we really appreciate that feedback, letting you know who you are and what you're doing. Um, yeah, there's a good many of you doing a good bit of sports jerseys. Some of you, a lot of it. Um, the, by and large, it's a, in the 20, 25% range, and then everybody else is a mix with everything else. So there's a good number of doing a lot of sports jerseys. And... While at times it can be a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little, somewhat labor intensive uh, and maybe not, but it's just a necessary evil. Everybody has to have them. And, and I think today we can talk about how we can make this very lucrative for you, how to save some costs in producing and still get the high end uh, uniform out to your customer. And then also how to expand and uh, get more uh, add, -on, add on sales to what you're doing already, not just the, the jersey itself, the on field or, or the promotional stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about decorating methods. Uh, we kind of tipped our hand a little bit there with the, with the polls, but it was it was uh, important to see what you, what you were doing. Um, one of the traditional methods of decorating um, sports jerseys, and we are talking about fall sports today. And I just and I know there's a lot of different varieties of fall sports, but we're keying on three different um, categories today. Uh, one being football, um, next being soccer. And then we included volleyball. Those are kind of the three top top ones, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people say there's field hockey and lacrosse and a lot of s crossovers with fall baseball and softball, et cetera, but we had to stop someplace. So we picked three of the most, most common ones. So we're going to be looking at football, soccer, and volleyball, and decorating methods. Uh, one of the uh, traditional way of decorating uh, is going to be with an applique. Now, applique is cut fabric that is sewn onto the, the apparel. Now, no one's doing that here, but it needs to be mentioned because a lot of the higher end, especially professional and, and college level are, um, are, are using applique or have been in the past. That's kind of making some turns uh, as, as we go. This is an example, and I'm gonna go over to the hero shot over here, which I think is three for you. And now this is not classic because it's kind of, uh, this is kind of the next, well, we'll talk about it as we go. It is twill on the bottom and it is sewn all the way through, but in order to save some cost, these were, um, there was some film put on top to give it a two color look without having to sew both layers, okay? So that is one, one applique. Applique and a combination of, of applique enhanced with, with film, et cetera. Uh, again, high end, high-end type of, uh, of um, production, the way it has been done traditionally on the higher end, uh, even on in high school, which as we talk about specifications today, we will be largely keying on high school and below. 
And so but I know there's a lot of different specs and a lot, you know, depending on your, your customer is going to help define that for you. But in case they're asking you, um, in case they're asking you for, for advice, like where should I be? How should this look? What type of method should we be using? What size? You know, you'll have at least something to get started with. No matter what, as we talk about those standards, make sure that you do your homework, that you do the research, that you know in advance so you can help guide your customer. But always listen to your customer because ultimately their customer could be the actual school district or the league or you know, whoever that's, you know, and they've already got their, their specifications. So there's no one set spec for how to do all these things, but there is a standard for, uh, for high school sports. So applique, one good way, uh, one very high end way, is a good money maker. Um, and of course, a combination of enhancing that twill with, with films, et cetera, to give you a, a kind of a more affordable way to get two color look. Also, um, pre cut numbers and letters. Pre cut numbers and letters meaning like uh, film, thermofilm in our case is the most commonly used. These guys right here, simple pre cut. These are very affordable because they're, 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 they're die cut. They're in, they're in groups of 10. They're a cookie cutter or a press, a die pushes these down and cuts them out 10 at a time. So now we're sent, selling, selling them in 10 packs to you, keep them in inventory, and you lay them on your jersey and apply accordingly. That's the most affordable way to go. But it also, especially when it gets into the letters, if you have a bunch of different letters, that can get a little bit labor intensive. So if I'm doing a team name, like on the back of this jersey, I think we've got one on there. Yeah, this team name here, that's all done in, in film. Now, if those were all individual letters, I would have some time laying this out um, on top of the, you know, a workspace. Now, we do have layout with tools that will help uh, significantly for you, but uh, it's still not the same as at the point of pressing as if I did the next one, which in my mind is the most, uh, it's a good balance. And that is using pre-cut numbers like these, but pre-spaced names. So getting these at the most affordable price, being able to lay them down side by side, spacing them out, very simple to do when I'm laying on the jersey. But the name, getting every individual letter spaced properly and in a line and the threes aren't become E's and not backwards, then having a pre-spaced player name ready to apply makes a lot of sense for me. So whether you buy them already pre-spaced from us or whether you're actually cutting the names yourself out of the same material, if you have that ability, especially when you're working with a few of the, of the films that are available through pre-cuts. And then there's, there's pre-spaced entirely, which is totally CAD cut. And we're going to actually do that uh, here in a little while. But when we decorate an actual football jersey, we will, um, I'll show you, the, the totally pre-cut, like the name, the number, all in one piece, and the same with the sleeves and the, and the front and the team name, et cetera. So these are all options. Now, as you are, when it comes to cutting your own, or at least partially cutting your own, a lot of options there too. And honestly, and as you, I'm certain that you're very familiar with by now, if, if you've been with stalls for very long at all, CAD Works Live is a huge resource for you when it comes to prepping your artwork as far as names, numbers, easy, wait, there's a place called Easy Teams in there where we're actually going to just type in the roster. Robinson, comma, 33, Ross, comma, 12, Squib, comma, 15, all the way down the line, choose the varsity format or pro block or whatever font that I like, tell them I want eight inch numbers, two and a half inch letters for the name, two color, drop shadow, and it will populate it for me, ready to go. I don't have to do any more. Even the best of graphic artists, that's a huge time saver for them. So you don't have to be uh, a brand newbie to take advantage of, of CADWorks Live. It's actually a time saver to take care of some of those things. Before I go any further, I always forget this. It usually takes me about 10 minutes in to say, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to type those in in your chat box. And if it's pertinent to the class and it's worth us talking about here, Karen will uh, men mention it out loud and we'll see if we can answer those questions for you. Maybe you'll answer somebody else's question through chat as well. So look forward to that. Okay, so we've talked about the different types of um, decoration. There's still more. There's also, and actually a good number of you um, mentioned that you are using screen printed transfer numbers. Transfer Express has number sets ready to go, different color combinations, eight inch, 10 inch through four inch, et cetera, uh, ready to apply. Love the fact that they, um, 
that they, you know, this is true ink. This is actual screen print ink. It's plastisol type of ink, just like any other uh, screen printed transfer. Love the fact that they're already in line and ready to pre-space just by lining up the papers together. So I'm doing a double digit. They will be equally spaced and evenly aligned because they cut them evenly on the grids because you really can't see the actual finished number once you flip it down like this and all I'm looking at is this paper grid. So works out very well. A lot of folks are, in, are, are appreciating that. Um, as far as overall, well, there's one more when we'll talk about durability. Um, digitally printed, something off from the VersaCam, a solvent inkjet printer cutter that allows you to do full color images, uh, like, like this one, for example. Let's get a shot on three, please. Like this, for example. I'm not just talking, you know, multiple colors. This could easily have been a, just a two or three layer type of look, but we're also getting some really cool looking effects here uh, with a digitally printed heat transfer film that can be applied to pretty much any fabric depending on the material that I'm using. So this is yet another option. This is kind of keep you like where you're not off the rack anymore. I can offer some really cool things for some, especially some of the adult leagues that are allowed to do what they want and show off. Uh, a lot of the schools and things have pretty much rigid standards, so you may not, you may not go, uh, you may not go go that deep in, in some of those. But that's definitely an option. Now, durability is this something that I would do on a football field, on field jerseys? Probably not. Not durable enough. Not scratch resistant enough for that to hold up on the football field, or anything that's going to get extreme abrasion type contact. Would I put it in basketball? Yeah. Well, it's it can be a violent sport, but violent sport, especially on the pro level, you're still not going to really beat each other to death with uh, with helmets and things like that. So this is good, decent for you know the the non-contact sports, but it's a great way to get multiple colors without adding any extra cost to produce them. Um, the most durable material for sports jerseys, if you're looking at something that's going to last, something that's going to be abrasion resistant, something that's going to block dye migration, because this red polyester jersey here can be a nightmare uh, for lighter numbers. If I put white on top of that in some numbers, they can turn pink. Thermofilm has been the, our flagship material. It is tried and true as far as being the most durable, the most uh, abrasion resistant, uh, the most uh, dye blocking, or at least dye migration in, um, inhibitor, keeping that, those colors from bleeding through. So that's a great way to go. Now, would I put it on a, on a very light t-shirt for something very fashionable? Probably not, because it's not designed for that. That's our sports material just for that. Now, on the other hand, choosing the right material, if I'm doing something as we get into, say, our soccer jerseys or our volleyball jerseys, which are very thin and stretchable polyester, there's a good chance that I'm going to want to use a very a lighter, thinner, stretchable material. So there we have options there. If you're looking at CAD cut, then we're looking at the Premium Plus. And that goes on a nice low temperature so that we're not scorching the jersey. A lot of these uh, performance type of fabrics have a very low temperature as far as um, scorch factor. So we had to keep that temp down, keep it around uh, under 300 for sure, close to 280 as possible is, is what we're looking for. So if I'm doing print and cut, then I'm looking at one of our tech materials, Super Tech Opaque, Super Tech Sublistop, which is blocking dye migration, gives a stretch and rebound, adheres to any fabric, low temp so it doesn't scorch the fabric. Same thing applies for the, for the Premium Plus, but we're dealing in one color at a time. Question so far, I don't feel like I breathed yet. Okay, good, <laughs> making sure. All right, so we have talked about decorating methods anywhere from you know, applique all the way through pre-cut and CAD cut type of numbering system. Most of you who have a vinyl cutter, that's a good number of you, it's about 80 some percent of you have a vinyl cutter. So you're cutting your own. Um, so you know which types of materials you can do. That seems to be the go-to. It's the least, uh, it's the most affordable as far as investment goes. Those of you who have a printer cutter, you're going to take advantage of that because now I can add plenty of colors without adding a whole lot of cost for me. I can charge more and make more profit. Yay, more profit is good. So those are the, that's the basics. That's the basic what we're looking at as far as decoration methods. Let's look at some standards. Now the standards that I'm talking about as far as what uh, is expected or what is allowed or permitted or um, um, just the, kind of the rules, uniform rule summaries are from the NFHS, the National Federation of High School uh, Association. Uh, you can find them online. Just do a search for that. It's exactly what I said, National Federation, NFHS rule summary or uniform rule summary. There's a PDF out there. It hasn't been updated since 2014, and I think it's still current. That's what we're going off of. Um, I have nothing else to 
to say otherwise, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking at for now. So we're going to start with football as far as what the rules are. Now, there are only a few things that are mandatory. A lot of things are just like, it's optional. You, there's no real rule on it. Basically, we're talking about front and back numbers. So with a football jersey like this one, this name up front, optional. Doesn't have to be there. It's not, it's, it's a nice thing to have and it's allowable. It's definitely okay to be there, but you must know who their team is. Um, but front number, when it comes to uh, football, NFHS says eight inches. Back number, NFHS says 10 inches. Okay, now granted we have a two color here. We actually looks like a three color because they actually did a little bit of a gap outline here so you can let the jersey show through. Another cheater way to pick up a third color without having to buy the extra film and do the extra cutting. Um, you can do that with a one color deal for that matter as well. Um, but there are additionals. You know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the teams uh, will want the player name. It doesn't have to have a player name. A lot of schools don't want a player name. Uh, one reason is uh, if there's no nameplate here, that's that kid's jersey to take home before whenever you know he graduates or whether he's off the team, whatever, because now I can't switch this over to another player. A lot of cases they will ask that you put that on an actual nameplate just like the, uh, um, the professionals do. So if a kid graduates or gets transferred or gets expelled, whatever the case may be, um, they're able to just take off the nameplate and just replace that, sewn it on. It's a sewn on plate where or you're doing all the pressing or sewing onto the nameplate itself. This one has TV numbers or sleeve numbers. Pretty much standard with that is going to be four inches, anywhere between three and four inches. And I say three to four inches because sometimes these different jerseys, this is like a bat wing type of jersey where it's kind of tapered, it's got that sleek type of fit, it's not that traditional cowl across the top. Uh, sometimes getting four inch numbers in here can be tricky. Sometimes they actually go on the actual sleeve down here because of the make of the jersey. Even professional sports have some, some teams still have um, names on the sleeves, actual sleeves, not up on the shoulders. But four inches there, typically the back player name is going to run over between two and a half and three inches, but if the guy has a ridiculously long last name, you're allowed to shrink them down to make it fit. You want to keep everything proportional. What kind of questions do we have? What is a nameplate and how do you take it off to apply another? A nameplate is you typically a piece of fabric, usually a mesh that matches the same cow of the jersey up here. Uh, and it's marrowed around the outside. It's got a little stitching on it. So it's a piece of the same material fabric that you're laying over top of the football jersey. It looks like an extension of the jersey itself. It is either pre-sewn or pre-pressed prior to it being sewn onto the jersey. To take it off, it's a, it's a um, stitch remover, just a, a, a ripper. You're just cutting, cutting the stitches. Maybe once you get it started, then after that, you can pretty much just tear it out or use the small scissors to cut the stitches away. Were the names created with the same media as the number? Yes, for the most part. It can be. Um, in this case, this case it is. It's the same white material that was, that was here. Again, there's no nameplate here. This is an easy way to go. On the higher end, they may ask for that. I'm just throwing it out there just in case they, they bring up nameplates. You're familiar with what those nameplates or name bars are. Done a lot in professional sports and even in hockey. I think the the Flyers, their, their color, is, their nameplate is actually a different color than the rest of the jersey, which looks really strange you know, for the traditional type of, uh, of hockey jersey, but that's that you definitely show that there's a nameplate on those. And do nameplates come with the jerseys? Do which, I'm sorry? Do nameplates come with Name the Nameplates come with the jerseys on a professional higher end, yes. Yeah. Sometimes they cut them out of regular tackle twill uh, to try to match the color of the jersey as much as possible. I would say most cases, if you're working on a high school and lower level, you may not see a nameplate at all. I'm just making, bring it up there, depending on the, depends on which manufacturer that the, uh, the high school has gone with, or if they've asked you to source that, you'll have those options as you're searching. All right, good to go. So standards on football, eight inch front, 10 inch back, three to four inch sleeves. Player name can be anywhere from two to three inches, depending on the size of the guy's name, what kind of space we have to work with. Team name can be one inch, um, like very small, like you see here. This is somewhere between an inch and a half. The one underneath I had here, I think I did even smaller. Little guy here, just a little something to rep represent. Doesn't even have to be there at all. Uh, but I would never go much more than two inches because the number is what's key up front. We're not trying to really uh, represent the team as much as we are the number in this case. 
Moving on to soccer, as I'm looking at my time and I have a feeling that I could go long today. Um, soccer jerseys. Soccer jerseys have much lighter fabric, um, almost always polyester, sometimes stretchable, sometimes not, sometimes totally um, could be an issue as far as dye migration, so you have to be careful what type of material we're going to be using on those. As far as, uh, there's only two, again, there's only two regulated sizes, and that's front and back. Uh, and you don't always even have to have a front number if it's available. Excuse me, a front number typically is a four inches minimum. Let's go with this one. I think I like this one better. Four inches minimum. It can be six. You don't want to get too crazy with it otherwise. Um, and then the back is a six inch minimum as well. The name on the back is optional. As you can see in this case, we have no number. This is a very straightforward jersey. Four inch front number, six inch back number. There was a bit of a crest up here. You'll see a lot of that in soccer, that their kind of team logo name is going to be up on the shoulder. Sometimes the front number um, can be up on the shoulder as well. Sometimes they're up here, just like a C on a, on a, on a captain's letter on a hockey jersey. Sometimes they're up on the shoulder with opposite the crest, and nothing going on here. A lot of options there, so there's not a lot of, specu uh, not a lot of uh, regulations as far as where things go. Um, if you download that PDF, it will give you a little bit more detail about how high and how low it needs to be, but it's a very good range. It's usually mostly like in volleyball that they're concerned with uh, how high up on the, uh, on the shoulders that the, that the letters or the numbers need to be. So four inch and six inch, no sleeves to deal with. If you have, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, we'll get more into it, you can decorate the shorts. We're in, we're in soccer. You can decorate the stockings, the longer stockings that they wear. You've got can add their numbers to those. We're going to get into adding on sales at the end of, <coughs> excuse me, of the broadcast, and hopefully that'll give you uh, that'll give you some good ideas about how we can offer this to to customers and teams to add to really uh, spiff up their jerseys. Volleyball. Let's get this guy up here too. There you can see a classic. Sorry. There's a classic uh, soccer number. You see a lot of the striped or the inlet type of, you know, this happens to be a two color, yellow and uh, black, two layers of film. This could easily have been just one black layer with the yellow missing, with the, with the white showing through to get that classic soccer type of number look. Um, but um, you can do, you can do obviously get a nicer color with, with, with two colors there as well. Um, High school don't worry too much about it, but these things are starting to get their advertising and everything on professional sports jerseys, so who knows where there'll be things next. There's nothing to say there can't be a crest on a sleeve or a, or a date or something. There's a lot of options here. They're just saying these are the things that are important. We have to have at least a four-inch front number and a six-inch back number. Volleyball. This one's busy. Volleyball, the exact same specs as soccer. Four-inch front minimum and six-inch back minimum. They can be bigger. Uh, most cases, they are not. Usually, they keep the front end a little more, a little more, uh, uh, a little smaller. This one was done with a full because it is. Uh, there's not a whole lot of abrasion and contact and beating beating each other up in, in volleyball. This was done with with print and cut. So we've got full color of the of the uh, team name on the back. There's six inch. Uh, it's actually an eight inch number on the back here. It's okay. I think it has to be within five and a half inches from the shoulder to the top of this number. Those are things that you can dig into and kind of document. Notice we've done a little bit of cresting up on the sleeve here, showing the, uh, showing the, uh, the, the school logo, with, I believe they're the Titans, both sides. Not necessary, but it definitely adds some value to that jersey. And it doesn't cost you that much more, especially if you've got that printer cutter. Another look on volleyball. And we'll talk about materials too. Uh, this one happens to be, and actually it's marked. Okay, this is thermofilm. It's got the shatter font. So you've got this shatter type of look, a nice shatter font with the team name on the front, four inch on the front, six inch on the back. That was classic. In the past, uh, in volleyball, flock has actually been uh, a, a, a favorite material. Uh, mostly because if, as people are sliding across the court, they didn't, there wasn't any grabbing of any type of vinyl type material making you stick. You actually glide a little bit further. You didn't drop dead in your tracks as you slid across, trying to make a dig on it or something like that when you're flat out on the floor. 
But the trick is to know your material. Know your material, know where, what, I'm, what I'm applying to. Don't assume that everything is polyester. There are some football jerseys out there that are nylon. There are some football jerseys where the white is polyester and the, or vice versa. The white is nylon and the, and the um, color jersey is polyester of the same make. And there are so some that have polyester cowls up on the top and then the rest of it is nylon. So know what you're applying to so that you know you have the right fabric. And it's, it's important to check that out in advance as you quote jobs and see how am I going to apply to this. We have a question. Was the print and cut material sublistop and will that material bleed? It was sublistop and no, it won't bleed. Uh, it will block nicely the standard dye migration that comes from polyester where the dye in the fabric just doesn't want to stay in there as it gets warmed up uh, over you know, close to 300 degrees and wants to travel. That's not to say that if it was a high bleed type of material, which is a true sublimated jersey, test first, make sure. Yeah, because that's a little different than a low bleed situation where uh, just a regular dye that the, when, the, fa when the, the fabric was dyed the first, in, the, in the first place um, just wasn't like a posi charge type material that de tends to want to bleed. Good to go. All right. Um, I want to show you something quickly, if that's possible. Um, and we're going to switch to my computer at this point. Oh, look how good she is. This is kind of a new tool for us. Uh, this is called the uh, Sports Number Tool. We're going to do a quick demo of it. It's kind of new. It's been out for just a little bit. Um, we're going to go to, first of all, you have to be logged in. And I am a student. Hi, student. And go to My Account and then go to Marketing Support. Now, what this is, uh, once we get there, we'll see. And I'm going to find the Sports Number Tool, which you see here. I'll say Go. You can do, you'll have a lot of fun playing with this at home. Um, yeah, once we get off the air, we'll open up the tool. But this is going to give you an opportunity to kind of just preview what your customer could be looking for. And the very first thing we do is we choose what number, just so we get a good idea. I always like the old 35. 35's in there. What sport category? This really doesn't have anything to do with the way the jersey is going to look because that jersey is going to look the same no matter what. This is just here to show you the color of the jersey. Uh, so we'll say, we'll say football. Probably the most popular fall sport, at least in America. Font category, and this is where it gets a little crazy. You can look through all sorts, basic, block, bold, fun, gothic, italicized, modern. Let's go modern. Just because, just because. Go to drive. Let's see what that one does. That's a cool look. At this point, we say what foreground? That's be the top layer. What's the centered color, the main color of the, uh, uh, let's go red. My shirt color, I think I'm going to make royal. And then the background color of the number, just so I can get it what it looks like is going to be white. That's a sharp look. You can never go wrong with red on white on royal. It just looks good. Uh, America. Anyway, a um, lot of options. You can keep continue to change. Okay, well, they don't, don't think that red looks good. What would happen if we made that a, I don't know, maybe a Kelly Green? Eh, it's all right. We'll see hawkish, but it works. So obviously, you're not gonna, your customers are going to have school colors. You're going to have to try to maintain that. <laughs> so you don't have a lot of options here. But they are going to have some options as far as font, uh, font style um, and and the, the, the type of, the type of uh, colors that you go with, the color combinations, whether it be white on green or green on white, et cetera. This gives you just an opportunity to show them, here's what this font will look like. Is this what you want? So we don't deliver you know, 80 jerseys and they go, oh no, we can't have that. So you got to make sure. So this is just to give you a good idea. Now, once this is all done and you're happy with what you got, uh, and the, we can, or at least you think you are, you can now email that directly to your customer. Uh, and or to yourself so you have a copy of it and then you can email the copy of to, to them so they can get a proof of it. So you just basically say send design once you load in the customer contact over here. All right, clear as mud, everybody's got it. Love it. All right, let's X out of that. But it's just something new that's gives you just a nice help so you don't actually have to produce uh, a, uh, a jersey. All right, um, 
out of that, we'll go ahead and break out of that. We don't need to be back in the, into the computer for now. Let's decorate something. Let's decorate a football jersey. I'm tired of sitting and talking. Let's, let's actually do one. As we go, we'll kind of discuss uh, best practices. Let's move to the, to the uh, heat press. Starting with a teamwork, athletic apparel. And the very first thing I do is what? Check my, looks like we're good, 100% polyester. I feel good about that. 100% polyester, so what I have chosen, of course, for my white jersey is black thermofilm. And let's get, let's get a top view if we can. Get this out of here. I'm going to start with the front. Now, I have chosen, just for time purposes, not necessarily cost-effectiveness, to use fully CAD cut because I, I don't have a lot of time here at the heat press. My labor is most expensive to me and right now, and I believe that getting this thing, and I have to get this thing done right away, getting it on and off the press quickly is important to me, so I'm going to do a one one piece design. Team name up above, eight inch numbers on the front, inch space between them, about a space, inch space right here. Never, my mind, never any closer than a half inch to any pre-printed or seam, anything on this jersey that, that was part of the jersey, just encroaches on it, crowds it, it's not what it should be. You can also, with a mesh jersey, if you, as long as you look at it up front and look at it and say, yeah, it looks pretty good, I can utilize these little, uh, little mesh holes to make sure that I'm running pretty straight. So I got a nice even line. 330 degrees, I'm comfortable with that. Peel hot. Let's do the back. Now this case, the same principle applied. I already nested my name and number. In reality, if I were, if I, this were my shop and I was going to do football jerseys, sports jerseys of any kind that required team name and uh, number, first of all, getting your shirt on the press properly is huge, nice and straight, so you can see this cow that you, this line that you have, this seam here is is monstrous as far as keeping things straight. But if I were doing this on a regular basis, not just one off and had a whole team to do. I would definitely buy these eights individually, lay them on one at a time, utilize my laser alignment system so I've got my inch or three quarters of an inch space between the numbers and maybe even one across here knowing that I'm going to uh, put the top of my numbers there and then lay my name accordingly above and press all at one time. It's just much more cost effective to buy these numbers individually at eight inch numbers like 35 cents or something like that. Um, cutting your own player name, you can do that for about the same amount, 35 cents, or if you bought it from us, who knows, you know, but either way, uh, it's still more cost effective in my mind. Doing separate numbers, pre-cuts, and have the pre-spaced name because I do not want to lay out letters nor do I really want to waste a lot of material and spend the extra time cutting all those big numbers when I can buy the, uh, when I can buy the numbers pre-cut more affordably. But there's something to be said for laying that down one time and having a, having a perfect, perfectly laid out name, number, all perfect, ready, ready to apply in one shot. So your, your call on that, these are all personal preferences. Okay, now we have sleeves. Sleeves can be in a couple places, as we talked about. They can be up on the shoulder, which is kind of more, most common. I don't want to say traditional because early on, I think they were mostly down here. As these jerseys keep getting more cropped type of sleeves and tighter form fitting, so people can't grab hold of you on the line, uh, putting them here is get a little, a little more difficult. So, but it's all, again, it's all up to what is what are the specifications from your customer, from your team that you're applying to. You want to make sure that you, know, you put them where they want them. So if it were a situation where it's going on the shoulder, and I have eights already ready to go here, you make sure that it fits before you cut the whole team's worth of numbers. 
Maybe they wanted them down here. We'll see if it fits there as well. It would go either place. Most times, again, the TV numbers where the, where the shoulder numbers usually go up here. Now, how are we going to apply these? Well, I've got this great big flat press here. I've got a cap press. Here's an option. Let's go to the cap press. I'm not going to press there. All right, cap press here. Everybody always wanted to know what that 4x8 platen was for. <laughs> there it is. It's for these sleeves. That's not even the biggest one. This is actually the 3.5x6, so this one would just barely fit. But I would go to that 4x8 and utilize my cap press for the shoulders. This would lay right over top of there just like so. And I could lay my, my, my letter numbers right on top of that, press it, and done. That's one way. Back over to the other press. Karen loves me for this. Switch out a platen. Love the interchangeable lower platens on these presses. Every Hotronics press, the lower platen is interchangeable. Who knew that this actually was a possibility? If you know what that is, that's the flat bill platen, undervisor platen. You can, GoPro. You can slide these on and do your sleeves here or even the bottom part of the sleeve. Now, you do get into a little bit of a, depending on how thick this braid trim is, you may want to put a rubber pad here and then slide that over top of it that way just to raise up that image area. If I'm going onto the shoulder like that, then I would press it right there. That's an option as well. You can also do the same thing with the leg and sleeve plate, which I didn't happen to bring up here and lay the same plat pad here to get, raise up that image area. Let's switch it out again. We just happened to have made a 4x4 four four platen, which works handsomely. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and press it this time, I hope. Now, lining it up on the exact center, usually there's a crease, there's a seam there. I can do that. In a lot of cases, it helps does, or doesn't hurt to roll it slightly forward so it's a little more visible from the front, but we won't, uh, we won't uh, take that risk. We're going to go ahead and put it right down the center. There are, in most cases, on most fonts, an up and a down side to eights. So the fatter part of the eight, the longer cavity, is the bottom. It's like a snowman. The, little ball, the balls get smaller as they go up to the top. So there's a little snowman. So you want the larger base on the bottom. Some fonts are interchangeable and so not really necessary to change anything. Now, I almost did the unthinkable. There's no pressure there at all. When you change platens, always make sure that you check your pressure because we went from a 16 by 20 to a 4 by 4. Therefore, I need to give it a little more oomph so it actually engages. Don't make me do it upside down on camera. Would not dream of that. Usually about an inch up from the shoulder seam is a good start. You may sometimes may want to register off of the top collar if they're cut differently because not every, believe it or not, not every jersey is perfect. It's an imperfect world we live in. Manufacturers struggle at times too, but keeping them even in the same place every time is important. So use the same reference point, whatever it is, whether it be the top or the bottom. I typically go off the collar. I can see my center seam, lay my eighth on top, fat bottom number, about an inch up. And am I measuring anything? Heck no. I have a really good eye and I remember what it looked last time. Now, if I were doing this for very, very high-end people like uh, Nike, etc., the way they have like zero tolerance for, I may spot check myself once in a while, but more times than not, trust your eye. All right, spreading out. Bottom line, perfectly applied football jersey front number, back number name, shoulders. What else could go here? You could have crests up here. It could be a memorial type of thing up here on here by my school logo. There's a lot of different options there. Going to uh, quickly move into the next segment, and this is the last segment. It's about adding on. What else can we do? 
want to have a, I'm going to have a, a sure zoom in on top of this. I'm going to slide to the other side real quick. So this particular, this is an infograph. Now we're looking at soccer right now. I'm going to flip it over to the football side here in just a little bit. But this is what we call an infograph. This is available right on the Stahl's website. It's where this came from. So if you look at how do I decorate this sport, this sport, well, these are already in there ready to go. And if you take a look, you've got the uniform front. And this is a classic case where I mentioned where sometimes the number's up on the shoulder as opposite the crest. Sometimes the crest is in the middle and a, and a number underneath of it. Sometimes there's no crest. There's a lot of options. So we're not really concerned with that as much as what else can I do here? Well, how about your shorts? Moving down just a little bit. Yeah, how about the shorts? Same number, same style. In the NFHS, NFHS has used the same number that you did on the front as you did here. The same font, the same, same size, regardless of what it is, that needs to be duplicated on the shorts. Um, what else can I do here? Well, let's see, there's a, here's a gear bag. That was done with the pre-cut numbers and or custom cut logo. This isn't quite as busy as what I'm going to do when I flip over to the side here. So you can, let's get us turned around. You can pan out a little bit so we can take a look at the whole football version. Looking at this, starting from the top to the bottom, obviously we have our player name or team name numbers, that's a given. Shoulder numbers, uniform back, but how about helmet decals? Something we can offer our customers. We have a vinyl cutter and or we have access to stalls who can do these things for you with the laminate. How about the pants? Uniform pants, there's the logo down there on the, on the, on the left hip or it could be down on the bottom on the egg. How about the socks? What about the stockings for the, for the soccer jersey? How about the gear bag as we mentioned before? How about the gloves? We can add the gloves. These are things, don't let these slip by. There's, you know, the sport has really, really evolved. It's no longer a bunch of kids playing in the mud with numbers pinned on their back there. These kids are, are, are geared up properly. Um, especially in football and in soccer, cleats. How about cleats? How about the, the actual, uh, the shoes, putting their, personalizing their number on that? Not just all of those, um, those type of items uh, that you see. You can go ahead and pan out and get the whole picture there. Um, not just the things that are actually on the player itself and things that they would have with them, but how about all the fan wear? How about the mom shirts, the spirit towels, the stadium cushions, uh, the chairs, the umbrellas, the window decals, the banners? It just keeps going. All things that you can provide, so don't shortchange yourself and say, well, I got through those jerseys. How about we actually make some real money and add all the extra sales onto them as well? We talked about shoes. Let's go over to the heat press real quick. Those of you who think that's crazy, I'm sure most of you are are familiar with by now, but in case you haven't, to show you real quick what, how we would actually do a shoe, well, we would do it with a shoe platen. Shoe platen like this one. Let's go GoPro on this one if you don't mind on top. And just real quickly, we'll just show you load the shoe this way to get the side number that's already printed here. So we would do one on both sides, press the player number there, or go this direction and do this on the front on the front here. The believe it or not, and you just stay right where you're at. We're okay. I'll just stack them. If this were on here, we can actually do the same thing here by we're using this this flat bill platen just to do the sides. You won't get the heel with this particular one, but you can actually do the sides of shoes on this hat bill platen. So so far we've done hat bills underside. You've also done the sleeves of a football jersey, and you're also now doing shoes, all with the same platen. Who knew? All right. We're winding down on time. I'm, in fact, I'm exactly where I was supposed to be. And we, I was going to say, do we have any questions? How do you keep press marks from appearing on the jerseys, especially on the volleyball jerseys? How do you keep the heat press marks from, especially on the volleyball jerseys? Well, it's all about heat. Uh, if you're getting press marks, it's 90% of the time that is, it's a scorch mark. That polyester fabric is very delicate and you need to apply a material that goes on a low temperature. Therefore, I use a material that we can apply at something about 280 degrees or less. Premium Plus, any of the uh, tech materials as far as the, uh, or use, using, utilizing Transfer Express's Elastoprinch, which goes on a nice low temperature as well. It's almost always about 
the, 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 the heat, keeping the heat down. Sometimes you can ease the edges by using a pillow or something so you don't get the hard edge of the square, but for the most part, it's scorched. Would you or would you not recommend screen printed transfers for jerseys? Screen printed transfers for jerseys, I don't have a problem with. Uh, Transfer Express promotes it as far as even on, they sell you on football, but as far as durability goes, I think just in my mind that a thermofilm is going to be a much sturdier option. Um, anything as far as basketball, um, you know, volleyball, lesser contact type of sports, I don't see a problem. They're extremely durable. I mean, it's, it holds up well in washes. It just doesn't matter. We're worried about mostly about abrasion resistance at this point. So if, it can, if you don't get a lot of abrasion, then it's going to hold up well. Where can the Decorating Playbook infographic be found? Decorating Playbook infographic, if you just go to, well, let's go find it together. <laughs> All right, let's go find it. Uh, let's see. Help and education. When you hover over help and, help and video education, you'll see how to decorate. And then here is a list of different sports and organizations, even cheer, etc. So the football uniform that we saw there, I'll click on football uniforms. And this will give you a lot of information right here about how this jersey was made, that what, the poly, what the fabric was, what the material that was used, etc., etc., etc. And then there's recommendations as far as uh, what we talked about, front numbers, back numbers, et cetera. Um, but then when you click to, hang on, it's here. I haven't been here for a little while, so I apologize. There's an infograph right on this page. Oh, yeah, I missed it. Here it is, 360 view of football, infograph for decorating football players head to toe. So when I click that, actually gives me that very PDF. Click it one time and now it zooms in uh, very tight and you can scroll around there. That's why I kind of printed it out so you can see it this way because it was tough for me to navigate here on the screen and show you everything. So, Plus I wanted to show off that I could print it. Any other questions? All right. We appreciate your time today. Um, hopefully that this was a little bit of an insight as to how to decorate football, soccer, volleyball, some general principles, best practices uh, that kind of apply across all sports. Uh, so using the resources that you have, Stalls has a ridiculous amount of resources for you, whether it be on their website or whether it be uh, on Stalls TV. Um, a lot of different options for you to, to get the right answers and do things properly. We will be, our next broadcast is happening on, make sure I took notes and everything, on Thursday. That's actually in a couple days, October, uh, August 18th, not October, uh, is at 11 o'clock. We'll be looking at creating artwork for vinyl cutting with Adobe Illustrator Edition. These are all done by Dane Clement from Great Dane Graphics, real smart guy. And then at 2 o'clock the same day, there'll be the Corel version. So if you haven't signed up for that and you're interested in uh, creating artwork for vinyl cutting, sign up, see what's got going on. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for tuning into Stalls TV. See you next time.